What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Still here in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 38. And here in Isaiah 38, we see about Hezekiah, also in chapter 39. And potentially, I'll combine the two if God leads me. But I plan on doing them separately. But here in Isaiah 38, Hezekiah is told that he's going to die. And he pleads with God for for life. And uh, God performs a miracle to show a sign to him. And uh, we'll see that here in a minute. But first off, I'm going to start with the gospel. Everyone who... Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment. And anyone who hasn't received the free gift of salvation, anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with Him in His kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. There's nothing we can do to earn our right standing with God. And that's why Jesus came. He came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptations like us, but lived a perfect life. That perfect life that we can't live. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, he didn't deserve to die. That death that we deserve in the lake of fire, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sins are taken away and we receive his righteousness, his perfection. It's only through the sacrifice of Jesus. That we can be saved. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart. And, or change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible. It means turn from your sins. Turn from your wickedness. And turn to God. Follow him. It's basically giving your life to God. Turning to him. And the gospel already said the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And you call and rose three days later. And you call out to him to forgive you. To save you. To change you. He will forgive you. If you truly mean it, he will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit, which changes your heart and leads you to follow him. The Holy Spirit also gives you wisdom, discernment, and understanding in many things. He will forgive you. He will give you the Holy Spirit. And he will give you eternal life. The Bible says... We can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love Him. We know it's going to be with Him, with the Father, the Son, with the angels, in His kingdom, in paradise, with all the rest of the people of God, in new glorified immortal bodies. Not these bodies that die, but new bodies. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. The end is near. And even if it wasn't, this life is short. And we got to be prepared for what is next. Now let's get into Isaiah 38. In those days, Hezekiah became mortally ill. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says Yahuwah, Set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to Yahuwah and said, Remember now, O Yahuwah, O Lord, I beseech you, how I, how I have walked before you in truth, and with a whole heart, and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept, wept bitterly. And the word of Yahuwah came to Isaiah, saying, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says Yahuwah, the God of your father, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, Behold, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. And we know that he did. See, if, see, God may... I mean, this isn't always the case for everybody. But, you know, we might be on our deathbed. God might have plans for us to, to go. But if we truly humble ourselves and truly seek Him, He hears our prayers. If we truly seek Him and submit to Him, He hears our prayers. 
and he responds. Go and say to Hezekiah, thus says Yahuwah, the Lord, the God of your father David, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, behold, I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. This shall be the sign to you from Yahuwah, that Yahuwah will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will cause the shadow on the stairway which has gone down with the sun on that stairway of Ahaz, to go back ten steps. So the, so the sun's shadow went back ten steps on the stairway which it had gone down. And so, God said, ask, ask Hezekiah. Well, and actually he didn't ask him, did he? Oh, if he did, it's, it's not in this particular scripture. I believe he asked J Joshua, do you want the shadow to go forward or to go backward? And he said, go backward. And it said the sun didn't go down for about a whole day until Joshua defeated his enemies. And then it happened here as well, that the shadow declined. And here where it says the stairway of Ahaz, a lot of people believe that is this is... Uh, and I would have to do a little bit more research to say for sure. Because I, the only reason I say that is because I did see a commentary that said it's not necessarily uh, supposed to be a um, sundial. Basically, it's believed that Isaiah's uh, or the stair staircase of Ahaz there that... Uh, the sun, the sun shadow went back on, was actually a sundial, which tells time, based on the shadow of the of the of the sun. And we read here. I just had an article pulled up. It said, uh, "This ornate sundial may be APS's uh, most unusual instrument. It is known known as the dial of Ahaz." After the king of Judah, who supposedly invented the sundial in the 8th century BC, BCE. So it's believed that Ahaz actually created, invented the sundial. And uh, God said he will make it go back 10 steps. And according to some of these other translations of the Bible, this each step to... I mean, represented pretty much a degree. And some of the other translations say that he, he made the made the sun go back on the sundial 10 degrees. And so there's an interesting article here, and I brought this up in the, in the previous Bible study, the previous Isaiah, Isaiah Bible study, that, uh, that that in the last study and also in this study, there's secular proof of a work of God, of a miracle of God. Here in Isaiah, in back-to-back -back Bible studies, Isaiah 37 and Isaiah 38, and here's the second one. And there are, besides this article, which I'm, I'm about to read, there are other secular sources that say the sun stopped in the air, that say the sun, um, basically time was reversed, or time stood still the sun stopped in the air just like it says here there's actually evidence of this secular evidence which I don't have pulled up but, but I, what I do have pulled up here is uh, an article from the least and not from them but uh, from the least uh, for me would be the least trustworthy source you would think uh, from for a lot of people, but uh, it's titled, Did NASA Prove the, Bi the Bible Accounts of Joshua and Hezekiah That a Day is Missing? And so I'm going to read through a little bit, little bit of this real quick. It says, For many years there has been circulating a story that NASA, almost by accident, <laughs> has proved that the Bible story about when Joshua asked God to stop the sun 
and the story when Hezekiah asked God to turn the sun back 10 degrees is true. But did they actually prove that? Here is a story that I was alerted to, alerted to today. It may sound unbelievable, but it seems that NASA's latest discoveries have brought about some new information regarding the, regarding the Bible stories, finally confirming everything written in the Bible is actually true. Mr. Harold Hill, president of the Curtis Engine Company in Baltimore, Maryland, and a consultant, consultant in the space program related to the following development. I think one of the most amazing things that God has for us today happened recently to our astronauts and space scientists in re at Greenbelt, Maryland. They were checking the position of the sun, moon, and planets out in space where they would be a hundred and a thousand, hundred years and a thousand years from now. We have to know this and we have to know this so we don't set, send a satellite up and it have and have it bump into something later on in its orbits. And although uh, the Bible describes a flat earth, I don't believe much of what NASA says, but this is very interesting, this article. It says, we have to lay out the orbit in terms of the life of the satellite and where the planets will be so the whole thing will not bog down. They ran the computer measurements back and forth over the centuries and it came to a halt. The computer stopped and put up a red signal, which meant there was something wrong. Either... Either an info fed into it or with the results as compared to the standards. They called in the service department to check it to check it out and they said they said it's perfect. The IBM head of operations said what's wrong? Well, we have found that there is a day missing in space elapsed time. Space in elapsed time. They scratched their heads and tore their hair, there was no answer. One religious, one religious fellow in the team said, you know, one, di one time I was in Sunday school, they talked about the sun standing still. They didn't believe him, but they didn't have any other answers, so they said, show us. So we got a Bible <laughs> and went back to the book of Joshua where they found a pretty ridiculous statement for anybody who has common sense. Mm. Common sense. Well, that's, uh, that's, a pretty much, that's a pretty ridiculous statement right there because science proves the Bible, real science. There they found the Lord saying to Joshua, Fear them not, I have delivered them into your hand. There there shall not remain a man of them to stand before thee. Joshua was, was concerned because he was surrounded by the enemy, and, and if darkness fell, they would overpower him. So Joshua asked the Lord to make the sun stand still. That's right, the sun stood still and the moon stayed, and hastened not to go down a whole day. Well, they checked the computers going back in time, into the time it was written, and found it was close, but not close enough. The elapsed time that was missing back in Joshua's day was 23 hours and 20 minutes, not a whole day. They read the Bible and said about approximately a day. These little words in the Bible are important, but they were still in trouble because you cannot not account for 40 minutes. You'll be in trouble a, a thousand years from now. 40 minutes can be found, or 40 minutes had to be found because it can be multiplied many times over in orbits. Well, this religious fellow also remembered somewhere, somewhere in the Bible it said the sun went backwards. And the spaceman told him he was out of his mind. But they got out the book and they read these words in Second Kings chapter 20. Hezekiah, on his deathbed, was visited by the prophet Isaiah, who told him he, that he was going, going to die. Because this is also in Second Kings. Hezekiah did not believe him and asked for, asked for a sign as proof. And that was, that's actually uh, misquoted. Um, or, or maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. Isaiah said, "Do you want the sun to go ahead ten degrees?" Hezekiah said, "It's nothing for for the sun to go ahead ten degrees, but let the shadow return backward ten degrees, or ten steps." Isaiah spoke to the Lord, and the Lord brought the shadow ten degrees backward. It says, ten degrees is exactly forty minutes. Twenty-three hours and twenty minutes in Joshua plus forty minutes in Second Kings make the Make the missing day in the universe. Wow. Wow. And like I said, there's other secular sources for um, reports of this happening. The sun's reversing and the sun's standing still and stuff. But wow. So back here in Isaiah 38... If 
can get it pulled up. I don't know what's up with the phone today. This shall be the sign for you from Yahuwah, that Yahuwah will do this thing because he has, that he has spoken. Behold, I will cause a shadow on the stairway which has gone down with the sun on the stairway of Ahaz to go back ten steps. And I do believe in 2 Kings 20, it, it's, he asked him, do you want it to go forward or go backward? Which has gone down with the sun on the stairway of Ahaz to go back ten steps. So, so the sun's shadow went back ten steps on the stairway which had gone down. A writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after his illness and recovery. So this is a writing of Hezekiah after his illness and recovery. I said, In the middle of my life, I am about to enter the gates of Sheol. I am to be deprived of the rest of my years. I said, I will not see Yahuwah, Yahuwah, in the land of the living. I will look on man, no more among the inhabitants of the world. Like a shepherd's tent, my dwelling is pulled up and removed from me. As a weaver, I rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day until night, you make an end of me. I compose my soul until morning. Like a lion, so he breaks all my bones. From day until night, you make an end of me. Like a swallow, like a crane, so I twitter. I moan like a dove. My eyes look wistfully to the heights. Oh Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. What shall I say? For he has spoken to me, and he himself has done it. I will wander about all my years because of the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things men live, and in all these things is the life of my spirit. O oh, restore me to health and let me live. Lo, for my own welfare, or shalom, peace, I had great bitterness. It is you who have kept my soul from the pit of nothingness. For you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you. Death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. It is the living who give thanks to you, as I do today. A father tells his sons about your faithfulness. Yahuwah will surely save me. So we will play my songs on stringed instruments all the days of our life at the house of Yahuwah. And that will also happen in the kingdom. But hallelujah. That's a powerful message there by Hezekiah. And I'm going to read it one more time, but it's a little bit quicker. I said in the middle of my life, I am to enter the gates of Sheol. I am to be deprived of the rest of my years. I said, I will not see Yahuwah, Yahuwah, in the land of the living. I will not look on man, no, no more. I will look on man, no more, among the inhabitants of the world. Like a shepherd's tent, my dwelling is pulled up and removed from me. As a weaver, I rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day until night, you make an end of me. I compose my soul until morning. Like a lion, so he breaks all my bones. From day until night, you make an end of me. Like a swallow, like a crane, like so I twitter. I moan like a dove. My eyes look wistfully to the heights. O oh Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. What shall I say? For he has spoken to me, and he himself has done it. I will wander about all my years because of the bitterness of my soul. O oh Lord, by these things men live. And in all these things is the life of my spirit. Over restore me to health and let health and let me live. Lo, for my own welfare or peace, I had great bitterness. It is you who has kept my soul from the pit of nothingness, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you, those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. It is the living who give thanks to you as I do today. A father tells his sons about your faithfulness. 
Yahuwah will surely save me. So we will play my songs on stringed instruments all the days of our life at the house of the Lord, of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Now Isaiah had said, Let them take a cake of figs and apply it to the boil that he may recover. Then Hezekiah had said, What is the sign that I shall go up to the house of the Lord? After he had been healed. And um, figs are actually used for healing. We read here. Um, one second. This my this phone is just completely slow right now. Uh, it's been all day. I don't know what's wrong with it. It says this remedy is said to be one still employed in the East for the cure of ordinary boils, but it must have been quite insufficient for the cure of a dangerous tumor or a, cabin or a cabuncle as that from which Hezekiah was suffering. I mean, it was a miracle of God, regardless. And, uh, you know, any of us could be gone any, any day. Any of us could be gone any time. It's, it's by God's mercy. And, um, uh, And God has mercy on His people. But it's all in His hands. It's all in His timing. Whatever happens. And uh, we just need to seek Him. We need to serve Him. We need to love Him. We need to appreciate Him. We need to be humble. And walk in His ways and do His will in everything. There's not much time left. We're living in the last days. Repent and believe the gospel. Uh, I... I said this, I would preach the gospel in the beginning. There's not much time left, brothers and sisters. There's not much time left to get our life right with God. We truly have to get our life right with God. There's not much time left. And even if even if there was, this life is short. As we see in this, in this chapter, this life is short. Any of us could be gone any day. It's in God's hands. But what truly matters is what's next. That's what truly matters. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. My brothers and sisters, stay strong. Keep the faith. Let's walk in all his ways. Let's preach the gospel. Let's sound the alarm and do his will in everything. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's uh, Isaiah 38. Love y'all. Shalom.